This is the Wingtro 1 Gen 2 with their LiDAR sensor from Inertial Labs. And I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about this system and just how easy it is to fly a Wingtro 1 Gen 2. Today we're in downtown Utica, a small town inside of Metro Detroit. And the plan is to fly the downtown area capturing high accuracy LiDAR data for the roadways, the businesses, as well as the Jimmy John's baseball field. Now, in order to do a job like this, you're going to want to use a drone that is designed for large scale projects. And the Wingtro 1 Gen 2 is the perfect fixed wing solution to allow us to capture data at a large scale while also using a LiDAR sensor to create a high accuracy point cloud. Now the LiDAR sensor from Inertial Labs comes in at a much more affordable rate. Comparing it to a $100,000 Regal sensor, this LiDAR sensor is under $44,000. All right, now that we've set up the base station, I've got the Inlet Flow app opened here. I'm gonna go into the base settings and I've gone ahead and configured our base marker position here. I can go back, come over to logging, and I'm going to start recording. And so this will now be logging its position and giving us a Rhinex file at the end of our project to do our PPK corrections on the drone. All right, and now let's get this drone all set up. integration between the wing tray and the LiDAR sensor is so easy. Let me show you how easy it is to set this up. Okay, I'm gonna take the drone out just like this. And if I flip it over, you can see there's the LiDAR sensor. I'm gonna grab the drone's feet like this. And it just slides in just like that, very easy. And now you can actually set the drone down and then you can do whatever kind of work you wanna do with it before you start to fly. I'm gonna open this up so you guys can see the inside of the drone. Now, Wingtra offers a variety of payloads. You know, you can get their 61 megapixel camera, you can get multi-spectral cameras, and obviously their LiDAR sensor that they offer. And they're held in using screws, so you would just unscrew it in the back, pull out the sensor, put in the new sensor, screw it in, and then there's a USB-C cable that plugs into the drone, and the drone will know which payload it's carrying, and so while the drone is flying, it'll know when to activate the data collection and collect the data while it's up in the air. So this right here is the PPK antenna that the Wingtra 1 uses, but the LiDAR has its own antenna, and it's right here. So it slides out like that, all right, and it's already attached and everything. So it's nice they've created this little 3D printed base that slides in here, so it's tucked away. So when you're flying, you're going to attach it just like that. And then to collect the data, you're going to get a USB drive just like this. Um, it's a little small one, and it just attaches to the side of the LiDAR sensor. So I'm going to just plug it in like that. And so all of our data will be recorded here. I will just pull this out when we're done and upload it to the computer. All right, so these are the batteries that we're going to use for the Wingtro 1. Now, the best part about these batteries is that you can actually take them with you on commercial flights while you're traveling through airports. So if you've got a job site across the country, you don't have to worry about shipping the batteries separately, using ground transportation, and then waiting to pick them up at the hotel. You could just carry them with you on the plane and everything is with you once you land so you can get started on your job right away. You simply take them and just slide them into the top of the drone. Now there are two cables sticking out. One is a micro USB cable, and this cable simply feeds information about the battery status to the drone. So that way, as a user, you'll know how much battery you've got left, whether you're fully charged or halfway, and the drone will know that it's reached a certain point where it may need to return home. So it's important that these are plugged in so that the drone knows how good the batteries are. So we'll start by plugging in the micro USB cables. And then these are just simply the power cables. So we'll plug those in here. And then this one right here. Cool. All right, now the drone has the nose. So I'm gonna put this up top and it just connects with magnets, it's nice and sturdy. So that's good. And then on the side of the LiDAR sensor, you are going to press the power button. So now the LiDAR sensor is on. We'll then take our cover 
and put it on top, just like that. All right, so I've got our controller here. And so this antenna right here that's connected to the tablet is for our telemetry connection between our controller and the drone. All right, so I'm loading up the Wingtra Pilot app right now. And in here, we're gonna be doing the mission planning for our project. I'm gonna start by selecting new, and I'm going to give this mission a name. So I'm gonna call this Utica Downtown, because Utica Downtown is what we're mapping. And then it's asking me for the sensor. So you have a list of sensors that are compatible with the Wingtra one. And I'm using the LiDAR sensor. So I've selected LiDAR here and that looks good. We'll say next. It's gonna ask me if I have a KML file. If you have something out of Google Earth, you can import it. I don't, so I'm going to just make the mission plan here on the Wingtra Pilot app. So we'll say skip. All right, so if we look here, we've got a position of where we are and this is the satellite aerial imagery. So the first thing I wanna do is specify my home point. By identifying our home point, if anything were to happen, whether we were to lose connection or the battery gets too low, the drone will know to come back here. So I gotta make sure that we give that point right now. So I'll just go to plan and click on home. And now there's a little H over our drone and then I can go back to plan and select area. And now we're going to give the parameters of where we're flying. So I'm flying from here up till here and I'm gonna fly over. Down here. And I'm gonna bring it down a little bit here. Okay, great. All right, so if we look here in the middle, we can see the area that I plan to map out. On the right-hand side, I can choose my flying altitude. I have it set to 300 feet. I think that's fine. I'm gonna leave it there. For the flight direction, I can adjust what the angle is. So I think I might actually do something like this. Yeah, this looks a little bit more like what I want. Okay, I'm gonna move this over on the top here so I get a little bit more coverage. And then we can also see our side overlap. So we've got it set to 30 degrees. This is pretty standard for LiDAR mapping. You could increase it to 40 or 50. I'm going to increase it to 40%. And this looks pretty good. All right, so we are covering an area of 225 acres and it's gonna take us about 15 minutes. Now, the nice thing is these batteries will last you between 45 minutes and 60 minutes, depending on the payload, the speed, the wind current, a lot of different factors, but you get a lot of life out of these batteries. So 15 minutes, no problem. We should be able to do it with just one battery. Okay, I like this. I'm going to hit save. I'm going to lock the mission in. I'm just going to look at this flight plan. Looks good to me. And now on the left side here, I'm going to click on checklist and it's going to basically give me a checklist that I should follow to ensure that the drone is set up and is ready to go for data collection. So anything that's in green means that it's automatically checked it and it's good. Number two here is the hardware and it's basically asking us if the sensor is clean. So looks like the LiDAR sensor is clean then says propellers not damaged and well attached. So I'm checking my propellers here. They look to be good on this one. Yeah, they look to be good on this one. I can spin both of them. Yep, they spin well. And then the lens cap removed. I don't have a camera sensor, but if I did, I'd remove the lens cap. But yeah, everything looks good here. So I'm going to tap on that. And the number 12 is asking me if my mission plan looks good. I said it looks good. So I'm going to tap on that and it's going to now upload the mission to the drone. This just takes a few seconds. All right, there we go. All right, 13 flaps. Make sure the flaps are not obstructed. It's going to do an automatic flap test. So our flaps are not obstructed. So I'll tap on that. So now it's gonna test the flaps, make sure that they're functioning properly. So the left one is good. Check the right one. All right, that looks good. So the flaps are ready. Now we're going to start the LiDAR data calibration. So now it's just gonna check everything with the LiDAR sensor, ensure that we have enough satellites visible. And it's nice that it does all this for you. Like you don't have to sit there and try to remember everything. Like it's actually a part of the software. The checklist must be followed every single time so that, you know, you do it right. You know, you don't have any issues. It minimizes errors, minimizes accidents. Looks like the LiDAR sensor is good. 
And so yeah, I like that. So now it's, it's basically tested the LiDAR sensor. Everything's functioning, so we're good there. Am I fit to operate? Well, I can confirm that I'm physically fit to operate. So <laughs> we'll click on that and then check that there are no people around 15 feet. So I'm gonna back away from the drone, give it 15 foot clearance around it, and then we should be ready to go. All right, everything looks good here. I'm gonna hit the play button. We're going to slide to confirm. Look at that thing go. Now it's gaining altitude, it's heading up. Look at it go. So I'm looking here at my controller and we can see the drone is doing like a circle right now. And that's because it's calibrating itself and getting ready for the mission. So while it's doing that circle, it calibrates the IMU and the LiDAR sensor as well as other components in the drone. And it's gonna head over to our starting location to start collecting data. The Wingtra team has done a fantastic job designing and engineering this drone. This is the result of 10 years of research and development and flying the Wingtra is so easy. As long as you've got your mission planned correctly, it's just a push of a button and it takes off and does its thing. It collects the data for you. And all you have to do as a pilot is monitor the conditions of the flight. Any issues that may erupt will result in the drone coming back home. So the return to home feature is still there. It's still active. If you disconnect for more than 60 seconds, it will automatically come back. It warns you, it tells you, hey, you're disconnected. Get closer to the drone or get a clear position to the drone. So then if like we look over here where these trees are, I don't want to be standing here. I'm going to want to actually walk over here where it's more open. I want to make sure that I can maintain visual line of sight and ensure that our telemetry is connected because I don't want the drone to disconnect from my controller. So, so far so good. I can see it's starting the flight line. It's starting on the north end of the downtown area. It's also gonna capture all the way up to Clinton River and then Jimmy John's baseball diamond. So that'll be really cool. I'm excited to see how that data looks once we process it. Okay, the drone is over our heads right now. We're about halfway done, heading south towards Hall Road, which is the south end of Utica's downtown. So we're looking good. And all right, that's it. The drone has finished the mission and it's going to fly back now. It's gonna do another calibration flight. It's like a little circle right before it VTOLs and then lands vertically. So here we go. Let's see it come back. So now that the drone has landed, I don't want to touch it yet because it's wrapping up all of the data collection and it's going to be writing everything into that flash drive that's plugged into the LiDAR sensor. So once we get the clear on the controller to go ahead and power everything down, we'll just leave it, let it do its thing. And then once it's done, we can then disconnect the batteries and put the drone away. All right, so the data collection is completed. It says we can now disconnect the drone. So I'm going to remove the top. And right here at the top, I'm going to remove the power cables and the data cables. So that looks good. Here on the other side of the drone, I'm going to open up this panel. And then right here where the USB drive is, I'm just going to pull that out. And this has all of the data we just collected with the LiDAR sensor. So we'll take this into the office and take a look at our results. All right, now let's take a look at all of the data that we collected with the LiDAR sensor on the Wingtra 1 Gen 2. I've got the little flash drive that was inside of the LiDAR sensor, and I'm simply just going to plug it into my computer. And I found the mission here, it's the first one. We're just gonna select it and drag it into our computer. So this right here is the folder with the flight information. So here is the folder for our data. And above that, I have the base data. And this is the Rhinex files that we get out of our base station. Opening this up, we see we have our observation files, well as our navigation and positional files. I'm just gonna copy all of these files and I'm gonna go back, open up the project folder, and in the data folder here, and we can see all of these dot data files. Um, this is all of the LiDAR data that we collected. And so we're going to paste all of the bases Rhinex files here as well. So 
do paste. Okay, so we've got all the base data. And now all of this data together will be used to process our PPK corrections. Now we're going to be utilizing the Wingtra LiDAR app. Now if you purchase the LiDAR sensor with your Wingtra drone, this will be included in your purchase. And once you've got the app installed and activated your license, it's really easy. All you have to do is open up the project folder and you will automatically have a PPK file that you can open. So here we go, the Wingtra LiDAR app is running. And now it's just going to start unpacking all of the LiDAR data that we collected. So you can see here, it's unpacking all of the different data sets. And so if we look here, it looks like we've got 28 different data sets. So we'll go ahead and let it unpack everything and process the data so that we can see our results. Now we're asked to provide the latitude, longitude, and ellipsoid height of the base station. Now the information that you see here is what it pulls from the observation file. So it's good to double check just to make sure that it's right, but it does update. So it's not like you have to put in your base coordinates every time, it does it itself. And I can see here, four, two, six, two, seven, two, that's correct. Eight, three, zero, three, six, two, two. Yep, that's also correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And Wingtra LiDAR app is gonna continue processing all of this data and updating the trajectories based off of the basis corrections to give us our high accuracy LiDAR point cloud. So I'll let this thing run and we'll come back once it's completed. All right, and so the data is now ready. Let's take a quick look at it. And as you can see here, we've got a ton of great data. We can see all of the buildings. We can see so much information here. And here's the baseball field. You can see the stands, you can see the lights, amazing. The amount of detail that you get with LiDAR data is just incredible. Now we do want to clip this data because when the drone takes off, it is collecting data and then it does its calibration flight. So it's flying in that circle and then it goes over to the start point. So we are going to need to identify the start point of the data set before it starts to go back and forth, as well as the ending position of the data set where it stops before it does another calibration circle and then comes back, goes vertical, and then lands. So we'll start by finding that initial start point. All right, and then I will right click and I will start it here. And then let's go over to the end of the project, right click and we'll finish here. Okay, great. So now we will let this process out the extra data. It's useless data, we don't need it. So it'll give us a clean point cloud that we can then export. Okay, here we go, we have our cleaned point cloud. I'll come up here to file and select export LAS files. Now it's going to ask me for the export method. You can keep this as export combined and then you can choose either LAS or LAZ. LAZ is a little bit smaller, like it's like a compressed version of LAS. I like using LAZ, it's just easier to work with. So I'll just select LAZ and then I will export files. And there you go, that is how you create a LiDAR point cloud with high accuracy georeferencing using the Wingtra 1 Gen 2. Special thanks to Wingtra for sponsoring this video and giving us an inside look at their technology and the experience of flying a Wingtra 1 drone. Now, if you're trying to understand more about base stations and just the surveying that goes behind the scenes, then I highly encourage you to check out thesurveyschool.com where we offer an extensive amount of courses and coaching calls, as well as an engaging community of highly motivated individuals looking to expand their knowledge in surveying. Check out the link in the description and visit thesurveyschool.com.